Hi, I'm Charlie with U.S. Water Systems. Today we're going to install the Luminor UV. Today we're going to be installing a 10 gallon per minute system, which is a three quarter feed and three quarter outlet. The installation process is virtually the same for the three quarter unit as well as the one inch. First thing we're going to do is unpack the box, get everything laid out. When you unpack the box, you'll get a box on top. Now this box can either have the ballast and the mounting mechanisms in it or hardware or it's going to have the bulb and the sleeve. When you get the box with the bulb and the sleeve, let's put that to the side so it's out of the way and won't get broke. Next you're going to remove the packing and pull out the chamber. This is the UV chamber. This is where the light bulb will penetrate the water and kill the bacteria. There is a glass tube that we're going to put in here that looks similar to a test tube. Once we install that, then the bulb itself slides in the tube. That way the, bulb, the light from the bulb can penetrate through that tube and kill the bacteria in the water. It's important that we put the glass tube in first, tighten it down, and then apply water pressure to the system and ensure we have no leaks before we bring the bulb or any of the electronics into the, into the mix. These UVs can be mounted vertically or horizontally. We like to mount them vertically and come in from the bottom and go out from the top. When you do this, you have to make sure you have adequate clearance to pull the, the bulb out when it's time to change the bulb. Same way if you do it vertically. You don't want to put this back it up into a corner where you can't get the bulb out and you have to remove the system every time. So always keep that in mind. You basically want the same amount of clearance as the length of your UV. That way you know you have plenty of room to get the bulb out when it's time for a change. Typically the bulbs in these are going to last 9,000 hours, which relates to about a year. When the bulb goes bad, the ballast will give an alert to let you know that it's time to change the bulb. So, like I said, you're going to do this once a year. You want to make sure you put this in, a situ in an area that's going to make it really convenient for you. The next box you're going to pull out, I always just kind of dump it into the box. It's going to have the mounting hardware, the actual spring that puts tension back on the bulb to keep it from riding on the bottom of the test tube, and then you're going to have some fasteners to be able to do that. This is the actual cap and o-ring for the the glass tube. So you want to make sure you don't lose the, the o-ring in here or, or this cap. This is critical to the system sealing and not leaking water. The other thing that's in that box is the ballast. The ballast is how, how we light the bulb and it also has control electronics for when the, the bulb goes bad or if there's a problem with the system. You can also add an intensity meter which we're going to show later in this video. This is the control of the whole system and when it's lit up you'll see a, a screen that comes on here. If there's a problem it'll be a red screen you'll know. But we'll show you that here in a minute. This is the ballast. Now also in this box will be the manual and if you have any further questions or, or you're stuck on something you can go through the manual and, and go through their installation process as well. Now once, once you've decided on a location for your UV you're going to want to basically Get it, get it up towards the wall, kind of measure from the bottom where you want it according to your pipe. Now something that's really important is the way that you feed this system. Typically if, if we're going left to right, I like to come in the bottom, curve around and then go in. Then come out the top straight that way. Basically we don't want to run any pipes over top of the UV because that's going to obstruct us when we try to change the ball. If you're running from the the right to the left, you would come in with your pipe, elbow up, go into the system, and then go out the top and continue. You just never want to run any pipes over top of the system. So once we have a good location where this is going to mount, then we can go ahead and mount the mounting clips. Now depending on what you're mounting it to depends on what type of fasteners you're going to use. And there's a couple different options in the bag, but certain wall coverings may require you to buy certain fasteners. These are the mounting clips. You can mount these to the wall and then the, the UV will snap into the clip. Once it's snapped in place and everything's level and you're ready to secure it, there's an actual lock strap that we'll put over the front of it.
kind of hard to see level here too because our stand's kind of leaning off to the side, but you want to make sure this is level. You can use a little torpedo level to put on the side of it and make sure it's, sure it's somewhat level. If it's angled a little bit, it's not that big a deal, but level's optimal. Once it's in place, we're going to install the lock clips. And they just snap into place. This is definitely something you want to do before you add the glass because you can hear there's a snap motion and also when you put this into the into the actual clips, it kind of snaps in place. We don't want to do any kind of shock that would break the glass. So make sure you have everything mounted, plumbed, ready to go before you ever introduce the glass tube or the bulb. Now the system is completely secured. Once the UV is mounted, we're going to want to put some Teflon tape on the two connection points so you can remove the rubber protectors. You always want to wrap, wrap the tape in a clockwise motion and don't be scared to put some tape on here. This thing's going to heat up so there's going to be expansion and contraction and if you don't get this properly taped you could have a little drip here and it's a lot tougher to go back and fix it later. Once you have the Teflon tape in place then you can twist it back to its original location. Now for the connection points we're going to use some John Guest quick connect fittings today, but depending on what your pipe material is, it depends on what connections you're going to make. If you're going to use PVC, I recommend that you use a, a reinforced fitting. A lot of times I like to put some type of metal in between there, so if you're with copper, you're fine. But if you're going to do what I'm doing today as far as switching from the stainless steel housing to a plastic fitting, I usually put a stainless steel coupler in between there just to help isolate some of the heat and it's, you're less likely to have a leak later down the road when you're incorporating two different types of materials. So we're going to put the coupler on the top and the bottom. So today we're using quick connect fittings. I've already pre-taped these. These fittings can be purchased from our website. They're compatible with PEX, CTS Copper, as well as CPVC. Make sure you get your fittings nice and tight so you don't have a leak later. Like I said, in this particular situation, we would bring this incoming pipe in from the bottom, elbow around, and then come into the system. This is a copper pipe, which you'll see will fit right in this system, or I mean in this fitting. You can fill it, hit the O-ring, push it on in the rest of the way. Once it's all, all the way in, then you tighten down the lock collar, and now it can't come back out. This makes it really easy and fast to install. This is a PEX line, and it works the same way. I'm just showing you the different types of, of actual line that you can use incorporated with these fittings. Now we have our lines in and out, and like I said, typically this is going to be underneath unless you're feeding from both sides, which is fine. You just want to make sure you don't ever run a pipe over the top. Now we need to put in the inner glass tube. We want to put this in and secure it, and then pressurize the system with water prior to ever putting the bulb or the ballast anywhere into the mix. So we're going to take the protective cap off the chamber. For this particular procedure, you're going to want to use rubber gloves. We want to limit the, the oils that we expose either the bulb or the, the quartz sleeve or, or the glass tube to. So we want to use rubber gloves and keep our hands off of the actual glass. When you open this, there'll be two tubes. You'll, you'll see inside there, you can see the green. That is your bulb. So this bulb we're going to set aside for now. The glass tube is what we want to work with now. You can see that the glass tube comes protected. And it's merely like a test tube. It's closed at one end and opened at the other. The closed end we're going to run down to the bottom. In the bottom of this chamber, there's like a little flap mechanism that this bulb is going to fit in. So once it hits it and you push it down in there, it secures it in the bottom so it can't rattle when the water's going back and forth with a water hammer or something like that. 
You just slide the tube straight down in. Be real careful, it can break. You'll feel it hit the center indentation and then stops. Now you'll see your bulb will be right around an eighth inch from the top of the chamber. Now we can add the O-ring seal and the caps. So now we can take the seal out of the package and the cap. Here's the O-ring seal. You shouldn't need to add anything to the seal. More than anything, if it's really dry, you can add a little bit of water to it. But we don't want to put any kind of grease on here. If we do, we want to make sure it's silicone food grade grease. Never use a petroleum product because it'll swell the O-ring and then it'll leak for sure. Once you have the O-ring out, you can wet it down like I said, but it's going to come from the factory with a little bit of lube on it. Now you can see how the O-ring fits right down in the groove, right around the glass tube. Now you take the cap, screw it down on the top. You'll feel it touch the O-ring. Once you feel it touch the O-ring, tighten it down hand tight and then stop. You don't want to crank this down. The O-ring is going to do the work. If you crank it down too far, you're going to break the cap or you could even smash the tube and crack the tube. So hand tight is usually good enough. Once that's in place, now we're ready to pressurize the system with water. You want to fill it up with water and make sure you don't have any leaks, especially up here. You also want to take a flashlight, look down in the tube and make sure there's water not going over into the tube. Once you're sure you have no leaks, then we can move on and put the bulb in. But it's crucial that if there's any leaks, we fix them now before we move any, anywhere further. Now, if you bought a system with an intensity meter and, and some regulations require this, this is, is the port where that intensity meter would go. And I want to show you how that hooks up as well. Um, for the common person, you may not have this. It's only required in some states. Or you may want to have it just for that added sense of, of security. But if you do have the intensity meter, we're going to take off this brass plug off the side. Take out the little white cap. This is the intensity meter. You can see it has what's similar to an eighth inch plug on one side and then the actual meter itself. If you look, you'll see an O-ring on here. This O-ring is what's going to seal this in the chamber. So again, when you put this in, you want to make sure you don't roll that O-ring over. And then also, there's a little space on the top of here that fits exactly where the tab on the side of the, the UV is. And you'll know when it's there because this white collar will be completely mated with the chamber. Once that's there, then you can take the nut Tighten it down hand tight and snug it just a little bit with the pliers. You don't have to crank this down either. You should only have to snug it. Now we can install the bulb. Like I said, you want to be real careful with this bulb and make sure you don't ch touch it with your bare hands. You want to have gloves on when you're dealing with this bulb. Now ship with the system comes an internal spring. This spring fits down into the glass tube that we just put in there. This spring will put some tension on the bulb and keep the bulb from falling all the way down in the chamber. So once you have that, you're going to put this spring in next. Now, the bulb, when you put it in, you want to put it in on the flat side, not the connection point, because that's what you're going to need to hook the ballast to. And again, you're going to put that straight down in there and being real careful not to break it. And you'll feel it hit the spring. That's what we're looking for. We want that spring tension on there that keeps this from rattling around and a chance for the bulb to bust. The bulb is in the chamber. Now we're going to mount the, the ballast. There's screws that come with that and you can mount it to the wall. Once you have your ballast mounted to the wall, now we can go ahead and hook up the, the bulb itself. You can touch the bulb with your bare hands as long as you're not touching the glass, you're touching the top part here and we're going to install the bulb, or the, the connector on the bulb. If you look on the connector, there's a couple little tabs here. 
And those fit directly into a couple little openings on the bulb, so you know which way this actually hooks to the bulb. Make sure it's all the way down on there, all the way around. And then if you look on the, the cord, you're going to push over a tab, turn it, and then the spring's going to push it back up and lock it. It's a little push down, turn, and, and it locks. Now the bulb's installed. Once the bulb is installed, you take the ground strap and attach it to the tab that's on the side of the chamber. If you have the intensity meter, you're going to plug it into the ballast onto the port that's right here in the side. Once everything's installed, you've ensured that you have no leaks and water pressure's on the system and everything's good, then we can go ahead and plug the system in. When it plugs in, the ballast will go through a series of diagnostics checking things out, checking the bulb, making sure everything's working right. Once it's completely done, it'll give you the check mark, give you the green screen, tells you you have 100% of the intensity that you need to have. As this bulb degrades, that percentage number will go down. When it gets to a certain percentage, that's when it'll set off an alarm and let you know it's time to change the bulb. To change the bulb, we're going to unplug the unit and shut the power off. You're going to take the bulb out in the same reverse order. You're going to push down, turn, and let it up. Put your gloves on, remove the connector, pull the bulb out, put the bulb back in, put the connector back in, orient it with the tabs, then reinstall it. Once it's all reinstalled and attached and you're sure that you didn't accumulate any leaks or anything like that, then basically you'll just ins you'll plug the ballast back in. It'll go through the diagnostics, detect the new bulb, and everything will go back to 100% and you're ready for another year of usage. UV is directly dependent upon the ability of the light to penetrate the water. So if you have water that's laden with tannins or any other type of, of staining type properties such as iron, things like that, any kind of coating that you put on this glass tube is going to serve as like a window tint and prevent this light from penetrating into the water stream, which will make it ineffective. Now if you have an intensity meter, it's going to pick up on that. If you don't, then it's up to you to check this to make sure that this tube stays clean. So once a year, if you have problems with those stains, you may want to pull this tube out and check it. And that's going to be the reverse of what we installed. Basically, you're going to shut the water off, take the cap off, the O-ring, pull the tube out. If the tube is stained, you can take alcohol and clean it down. If it's stained so bad that you can't clean it, then you'll have to replace it. But it's very important that this is the last piece of equipment in your treatment system. You want the water to be as clean as possible before it gets here. Now, when we sell these systems individually and not part of a package, we offer a filtration system which includes a 5 and 1 micron filter. That's, those are there for that very reason. We want to protect this UV. So you want to make sure that you keep up on those filters if you have that particular system. Or if you have other treatment options or, or treatment equipment in your system, you want to make sure that those are working properly to protect this UV. Once you've had, had it in for a while, you've changed the bulbs, like after three years, you should check the sleeve anyway. If, if you want to take a flashlight and look in there and you, and you feel comfortable with that, that's fine. But you should most likely, after about three to five years, pull that sleeve out and, and physically check it out on the bench. That's it. This is the Luminor UV system, one of the better made UV systems on the market. Um, we're real glad to be selling this now. I hope this helps you.